Can't sleep? Don't want to sleep? Afraid to sleep? Are the windows closed? Are your doors locked? Did you check your closet? And under your bed? Maybe you should keep a light on in the hallway, just in case. Now settle in. Make yourself comfortable. Lay back. Close your eyes. And let me tell you a story. Do you ever wonder if we're truly alone in the universe? If we are the only life to have evolved, gained consciousness, advanced, and developed technology across the entire galaxy? What if we're not? What would aliens from another planet be like? Would they be hideous creatures bent on invading us? Friendly little furballs exploring neighboring star systems? Or would they be something like us? Interview with the Alien Sorry I'm late, Shane said as he entered the studio. No worries, Leslie said from behind the soundboard and video switcher that was the nerve center of the podcast. We've got ten minutes before air. Ten minutes? He looked at his watch, then took his seat at his spot at the round table that served as a set for his weekly show about the paranormal, cryptozoological, and conspiratorial. Basically all the weird stuff that interested him. There was another man sitting at the table, almost directly across from Shane. Cameras were arranged to present the viewers a clear picture of the host and his guests without being a distraction, and there was one to the right of his guest focused on Shane. Leslie always reminded him to look at that camera when he was addressing the audience, but he usually forgot. He tried to think of the show as a conversation in his living room. A dinner party without the dinner. Eating on the air was a big no-no, as a live audience in the chat pointed out the one time he tried to wolf down a sandwich during the podcast. Hi, I'm Shane, Shane said to the man, standing up and reaching across the table with his hand extended. David, he replied, rising to accept Shane's proffered handshake. So glad you could join us. Did Leslie fill you in on how everything works? Listen through the headphones. Keep my mouth close to the mic. Don't move around too much. Shane smiled. He'd heard Leslie's rules a hundred times and still sometimes forgot to make sure he wasn't too far away from the microphone or sit still so he wouldn't lean out of frame. Perfect, Shane said. He looked at the show notes Leslie had printed out for him, a bullet point list of the salient facts about the guest, some key questions to ask, and other miscellaneous tidbits of information. Normally, he had time to prepare for his interviews. He would spend time with the guest before the show downstairs in the common area of the building that served as the headquarters for his burgeoning media empire. But today, he did an interview at a television station in the city for a show that was going to air over the weekend. It was the 100th anniversary of a local airship crash in which nearly 50 people had died. The location was a local hotspot for ghosts, and Shane was a local expert on that subject. The appearance went according to schedule, but delays plagued the trip back. He didn't have that casual time before the show to get a feel for his guest, determine how talkative he was, or if there were any topics that he was sensitive about. He'd have to go into this interview cold, which wasn't a problem. He trusted his producer, Leslie, implicitly. Shane recalled Leslie talking to him about David the previous night. She knew he had a tight schedule and wanted to make sure he was as prepared as possible. But Shane had not paid close attention when she gave him the rundown on their guest and couldn't even remember why he was on the show. He consulted the bullet-pointed list in front of him, and it was the second item. Alien. There were two types of alien interviews. People who claimed to have been kidnapped by otherworldly species, and the ones who claimed they were aliens, or at least a human-alien hybrid. David appeared to be the latter. Leslie interrupted Shane by placing a canister with a psychedelic label on the table next to Shane. What's this? he asked. New sponsor. Shane inspected the container. Another CBD oil product? Don't we already have a sponsor in that lane? Leslie shrugged. The copy is under your prep sheet. Just throw the live read in whenever you feel like it. Shane skimmed the ad on the sheet of paper behind the interview notes. Don't you use the stuff you advertise? David asked. Shane looked up from what he was reading at his guest. Well, I haven't tried this one yet, but I'll get around to it. It's been a busy day. Yes, your producer was telling me. 
Looks like things are really taking off for you, David said, nodding at a plaque hung on the wall denoting that the podcast had reached 100,000 subscribers. Well, it wasn't an overnight success. No, I'm sure it wasn't. Shane pushed the CBD oil powder aside. The contradiction of it being both an oil and a powder bothered Shane a little, but sponsors kept the lights on. He took another quick look at the prep sheet. Live in ten? Nine? Leslie prompted. He took a deep breath and looked at the camera. Shane had hundreds of episodes under his belt, but he still had butterflies every time they went live. Three? Two? Leslie continued, going silent on the one. Welcome, fellow travelers, to the redacted world, the place where we look beneath the black ink of censorship and obfuscation to find the real truth. A short theme song played as the video feed switched to a wide shot showing both Shane and David. Today my guest is David Smith, who is a fellow traveler of a different sort and, if I have this correct, from a different planet. That's right, Shane. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. Shane paused for a moment, wondering where he should start. Why? he asked. Why what? David asked back. Why are you here? Usually someone is promoting a book or their own podcast or is on some sort of personal crusade. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but why did you want to have a conversation with me? Well, like you, I'm interested in spreading the truth. So far, Shane was not impressed with this guy's shtick. However, Leslie wouldn't have booked him if there wasn't some angle that would make him more than just another deluded psycho. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? You claim that you're an alien, but you seem to look completely human to me. Is there some physiological aspect you can share with us that would show that you're not? Oh, I am human, just not from this planet. Okay, I guess technically that's still an alien. How is it that there are humans on other planets? I mean, we've barely started exploring the solar system. How did you get there? I was planning on asking you the same question, David replied. In fact, that's why I came here, to investigate how humans came to be living on this planet. Shane smiled. From what I learned in school, it was evolution. Are you suggesting that humans did not originate on this planet? That someone or something planted us here? That's one explanation. What are the others? Well, this world could be the original home of humans, and my planet was seeded by life from here. I think I've seen that show. Shane remarked with a smile. The other explanation is that we are both descendants of humans from a third source, that we are the product of a massive terraforming project in which our progenitors sent various colonies out across the galaxy to populate new worlds. And somehow we have forgotten that history? And all evidence of the enormous ships we arrived in was destroyed? Who says what a ship like that would look like? There is an enormous moon orbiting this planet that is largely unexplored. I think I saw that movie too, Shane said. Yes, well, there is a lot of speculation involved, but there has to be a reason humans live on at least two planets in this galaxy. For us to have evolved separately is frankly inconceivable. Shane glanced at his laptop screen. Some people in the chat are suggesting your claim to be from another planet is what's inconceivable. David smiled. Except that I know it is true. I hate to be that guy, but do you have any evidence to back up that claim? Shane asked. Unless, of course, you have some sort of prime directive that prevents you from sharing that with us, he added, anticipating his guest's excuse. No, not at all, David replied. He pulled out a device about the size of a smartphone and held it out for Shane to inspect. Its case had a strange texture, and the display seemed to be holographic, showing what looked like a view of the planet from space. I think Leslie has this app. Shane joked. Zoom in, David suggested. Shane took the device and tried to make a reverse pinching motion on the screen. Only the surface he expected to be there wasn't. Try using voice commands. Like? Increase magnification 200%. The image zoomed in. That's pretty cool, Shane said. Then he addressed the device. Magnify 100 times. The image changed as if it was on the end of a zoom lens with amazing optics. It was like other mapping apps he had used, but of a much better quality. He thought he could recognize some landmarks, the contours of a river, the borders of a city. Magnify ten times, Shane commanded. The device obeyed. Was that... no, it couldn't be. 
Magnify ten times, Shane repeated. The image resolved to a house in a clearing atop a hill. He could see the cars parked in the driveway, the chicken coop in the backyard. Was that movement? Zoom in on that animal, he said. The device zeroed in on a dog trotting across the front lawn, searching for a place to do its business. Dozer? Shane asked, recognizing the old sheepdog by the spots on his back and the one white and one black ear. This wasn't some enhanced image stitched together from satellite photos taken at various angles. It was a live video feed originating somehow from space. Amazing, Shane said. He showed the image on the device to Leslie. Look, it's Dozer, taking a crap on our lawn. That is his favorite spot, she confirmed. Shane handed the device back to David. Well, that's impressive, but I've seen tech that can do similar stuff. Do you have anything else? It's all I brought with me. To be honest, I thought it would be enough to convince you. I assume you want us to believe that's a bird's eye view from your spaceship? Precisely. And no one in our military has detected an alien craft orbiting the planet. They have, but it's not like you can zip up and meet me. From what I could determine by the census I took of the satellites you have in orbit, you're just getting a foothold up there. We probably could shoot you down. I doubt it. Listen, this is all very interesting, but I still don't get the why, Shane said. David took a deep breath. I've been observing your world for quite a while. Your geopolitical situation is rather tenuous. That's an understatement. Yes, it is. And even though I have made no effort to hide my ship's presence in your sky, and have made direct contact with several of the major governments, that I have appeared on many shows like this around your world, it has not garnered the reaction I had hoped. And what reaction is that? Wonder, awe, curiosity. Here I am, a human from another planet, confirmation that there is other life out there in the galaxy, a reason for all of your planet's peoples to unite. But no one seems to care. You say you've provided proof of your existence to our government? Yes, I've even offered to share my advanced technology. And what, they just ignore you and keep the whole thing quiet? For the most part. There are some individuals who have attempted to disclose the evidence of my ship in orbit and the messages I have sent, but they have been ignored, dismissed as crackbots. The chat is asking how he got from his spaceship down to the surface, Leslie chimed in. There's a good question, Shane agreed. I have a shuttle pod, David replied. And where did you land it? If people could see a real-life alien shuttle pod in the middle of a parking lot somewhere, that might help. Unfortunately, a parking lot is not a viable option. It requires an aquatic landing and is currently submerged off your eastern coast, processing seawater to refuel the engines for the return trip. That is unfortunate. If you want to see my ship, look it up online. Search for alien spacecraft in orbit. There are literally hundreds of amateur astronomers who have been taking pictures of it and posting them. Okay, Shane said as he tapped away on his computer. Can you put this on screen? He asked Leslie. The producer shared what Shane was looking at with their viewers. There were indeed dozens, if not hundreds, of photos of a large, cigar-shaped craft in space. You understand, Shane began, that most of these images belong to articles debunking them showing how easy it is to generate an image like this on a computer. I could create a deep fake of you. That doesn't mean you don't exist, David countered. Touché, Shane said. So why not land your main ship on the planet? Let people see it for themselves. It's not designed to operate in an atmosphere. No, of course not, Shane said, disappointed. How long have you been watching us, trying to reach out to us? Nearly five years, David answered. Wow, that is a long time. Why don't you do something truly undeniable? I mean, can you control the weather? I have, David declared. There were several hurricanes I steered clear of heavily populated areas, and that conflict last year that everyone feared would cause a nuclear war. It almost did. I stopped it. Kind of easy to take credit for things that didn't happen, Shane said. I told your governments that I was going to do it beforehand, as a demonstration of my goodwill as well as my technology but they prefer to keep my existence a secret, or at least allow it to be debunked uncritically. What possible reason would they have to do that? Shane asked. Leslie answered. Military-industrial complex. 
world peace and a unified population would cut into their profits. Yeah, you're probably right, Shane agreed. Do you have a plan B? he asked David. The alien nodded. My shuttle pod seats up to eight passengers. Once it's refueled, I can take you up to my ship, introduce you to the rest of the crew, show you around. That would be amazing, Shane said. Can I bring cameras? Can we do a live stream? Leslie asked. Sure, I can link into your satellite communication services, create an interface so you can broadcast your show. Wow, that would be amazing. When can we do this? How does our schedule look, Leslie? I'm sure we can rearrange the schedule to make room for a trip into orbit, she said. Good point. As soon as the shuttle pod is refueled, David said with an air of excitement. If you want to bring anyone else with you... No, I think we want to keep this an exclusive, Shane said. Maybe Alex, though, he said to Leslie. Alex would literally kill people to go into space. I know, right? Shane turned to David. Okay, we're in. How long until we can zip up to the mothership? David consulted the device he had used earlier. Approximately seven hours. Wow, Shane interrupted. We could make this happen tomorrow. This is so exciting. David continued. Three days, four months, and one year. Shane was quiet for a moment. Almost a year and a half? Yes, it's just about halfway done. Your shuttle pod takes nearly three years to recharge? It's not technically recharging. It's refining the fuel it requires from the elements and minerals present in your seawater. Essentially, it's creating a synthetic hydrocarbon with an energy density equivalent to three years, Shane repeated. Well, there's only one year, four months, and three days left. I think I'm beginning to understand why you're having a problem getting people to believe you, Shane said. If you don't want to wait, I can introduce you to my crew over my communicator. Video chat with other humans just doesn't have the same punch as boarding an alien spacecraft. Well, we didn't expect it to be so difficult to convince you of who we are. When we first detected radio transmissions from your world, we built my vessel and embarked on the journey as soon as we were able. It took generations for us to reach you. From my perspective, a year is not a long time to wait for definitive proof of what I'm telling you. Yeah, it's just the timing. It would have been a great episode for the potties. Oh, totally, Leslie agreed. Potties? The Academy of Podcasting Awards. Oh, right, David said disappointed. You know, you're not so different from the people in your government. If you can't use it to cash in to your own benefit, it doesn't interest you. He has a point, Leslie conceded. Gotta make a living. Which reminds me, Shane said, reaching for the canister of CBD oil powder. I'd like to welcome a new sponsor to the show, Paisley Powder, the last CBD oil you'll ever need. It's not a messy, sticky oil like those other products. Its specially encapsulated microcaplets dissolve easily into any food or drink, enhancing not only your life, but the flavor of whatever you put it in. David sighed, took off his headphones, and exited the studio without saying another word. Shane finished the live read, then shrugged at the camera. Well, looks like David left, he said. He just got up and walked away, Leslie confirmed. You know, I would have been more convinced if he had beamed out. It took them generations to travel here. I doubt they have beaming technology. Good point. Say, I never got a chance to ask him what planet he was from. Leslie consulted her copy of the show prep notes. He claims he's from a place called Earth, she replied. Never heard of it, Shane said. Okay, let's see what you have to say in the chat about our alien visitor. Thank you for listening to Interview with the Alien written especially for the Bedtime Stories for Insomniac's Fiction podcast by Rich Hosek. Please remember to subscribe on your favorite podcast app, rate us on Apple, Spotify, and Audible, and share these stories with anyone who enjoys audiobooks. Speaking of audiobooks, the audio version of Rich Hosek's novels are currently available on this very podcast. And if you're looking for other original story podcasts, check out asreadbyme.com. They have an eclectic mix of fiction, poetry, and essays that are sure to keep you entertained all read by the authors. For more information about this podcast, visit bedtimestories.studio and you can find out more about the host of Bedtime Stories for Insomniacs at richhosick.com. Thanks again and all the very best.